Hello world, this is Random Fix, and I'm in a vehicle which has a little problem getting the oxygen sensor monitor ready. So in this video today, I'm going to show you guys some things that you need to consider when you are looking to get this monitor ready, as this is going to be required to pass an emissions test and get your tags. And before we jump into the video and start talking about technical information about oxygen sensors and drive monitors, and this information can get a little confusing and overwhelming. One thing that should not be overwhelming or confusing is your online security and your anonymity. And I'm going to tell you guys about the video sponsored today, which is going to be Data Seal IO. This is a company that I personally use, and I've done a couple of reviews for them. So I no longer have to worry about my online security if my passwords and personal information is getting out there because they handle everything for me. It's on auto drive and I no longer have to have this in the back of my mind if my personal information is out there basically waiting to be stolen. So if you guys want to go ahead and check out Data CIO, I'll have a link in the video description box down below. And also at the end of this video, if you guys are concerned about your online security like I am. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So let me go ahead and hop behind the computer and we'll talk a little bit about this oxygen sensor monitor. And then I'm gonna give you guys some tips on some things that you should consider when you're going and troubleshooting and getting one of these monitors ready that is just being lazy or is really difficult to set. Hey everybody, really quick. My wife told me the oxygen sensor monitor video is not too exciting. So the next section is gonna be kind of boring, but if you wanna get your vehicle fixed and get your registration and get this completed, you're gonna have to let me go through this, seriously. So let's go ahead and hop behind the computer. I'm gonna cover some boring topics with you guys, but I'm gonna try to include some graphics just to keep your attention going. And if you're falling asleep, grab yourself a Snickers bar, guys. It'll keep you awake or a nice, strong coffee. So you're probably asking yourself what you can do. And the very first thing that you need to understand is the oxygen sensor itself is a pretty simple component. It only has a couple of elements that you need to concern yourself with. The very first is gonna be the tip. And in the tip, we have the oxygen sensor in here and also the oxygen sensor heater. And on the other side, connected with the wiring is gonna be the pigtail or the connector. And most of the time the connector here, we have four wires and two of the wires are gonna be for the oxygen sensor heater. So if you had a simple multimeter, you could go ahead and test the continuity of the oxygen sensor heater. And I'll have a link down in the video description where you can go ahead and watch me perform this. It's very simple. It only takes a few minutes. There's a few phrases that we need to keep in mind during this video. So whenever I speak about the oxygen sensor, I might refer to it as the O2 sensor. Ready, pass, set, complete means that that function is complete and that monitor is ready. And incomplete, unset, not ready means the monitor has not successfully passed. Always check your local regulations. In California, the EVAP is exempt. However, in the state like Oregon, the EVAP is not exempt. And if you see NA on your OD2 reader, this means that it does not apply. The O2 monitor is different from the O2 heater monitor. The O2 heater monitor is basically designed to get the oxygen sensor ready faster. So it could do a better job of detecting the vehicle's emissions. Tip number one, don't waste your fuel if not prepared. Vehicle preparation is key to getting the oxygen sensor ready. So your vehicle must have a strong battery and a good alternator. If you have a check engine light on for some reason, get it dealt with. If there's a pending code, you want to know about it before you go on a drive cycle because it will prevent the drive cycle from completing. And if you have a permanent diagnostic code, you need to go ahead and drive to clear this. I'll have a link down below on how you can go ahead and achieve this as you cannot delete a permanent diagnostic code. And to help your drive cycle go faster, you want to have the fuel level between a quarter to three quarters as this will help the EVAP monitor set. Tip number two, if you clear your check engine light and the light turns back on within a few seconds as you turn the engine back on, it is most likely an open circuit. So an example is a broken O2 sensor element, a damaged or cut wire, or a completely broken sensor. 
So you might be asking yourself, which monitor should you set first? Well, there's a few monitors that set pretty quickly as soon as you turn the vehicle on. And this includes the fuel monitor, the misfire monitor. These happen automatically when the conditions for tip number three are met. And tip number three is just because it starts your engine doesn't mean it can run your computer. If your battery is weak or undercharged, some of the most important tests will never run. Which leads me into the next slide, which is even if your car starts just fine, the power control module, the PCM, is super sensitive to even the slightest glitch in the battery. It will prevent and suspend the drive cycle from running if any aspect of the charging system performance or battery performance is not ideal. I cannot overemphasize this. So if you guys are seeing commonality in the video, it's this that these newer vehicles are so computer dependent. And if there's anything that's gonna go ahead and keep that computer from running all of its tests, it's gonna be basically a power source. So the battery and also the alternator are super important. A lot of the newer vehicles have a separate battery just for the computer that's completely isolated from the starting battery. Tip number four, if over four or it needed a jump, Test it and read the clues. And we're going to talk about that now. If the oxygen sensor heater monitor is not ready, check to see how many other monitors are also not ready. If the oxygen sensor and catalyst monitor are also not ready, the issue is most likely your battery, guys. There we go. The battery comes up again. Consider replacing your battery, as I mentioned in the tip, if it's over four years old. After you test it, if you don't have a tester, you can go down to O'Reilly's and have this tested for free. If you guys want to do it at home, I'll have a link to an awesome low tester in the video link down below. Tip number five, it could be old because it's last. In case only the oxygen sensor heater monitor is not ready, however, the other monitors like the oxygen sensor monitor, the catalyst monitor, Secondary air system monitor, the EGR monitor, EVAP monitor are all ready. Most of the time, the heater monitor will eventually set and be ready. When a heater circuit in the oxygen sensor is worn out or is old, it may be the last monitor to pass. But if the oxygen sensor and catalyst are ready, then the heater has to be working or the other two monitors would fail and set a code. For you trade it, sell it, or shoot it, try this. Pro tip, sometimes modules just have a glitch and cannot communicate or run the drive cycle. So you're probably asking yourself, what should you do in this case? Because this does happen. I've seen this happen a few times. You can't figure it out. A, I would go ahead and clean the oxygen sensor contacts with electrical contact cleaner. I'll have a link down below. I'll verify you got an original oxygen sensor. I would go ahead and clear the drive history data. Then go ahead and disconnect the battery. You could just go ahead and disconnect the negative post for one hour, leave that off. After the hour is up, reconnect the negative post. Take the vehicle for a drive cycle. I'll have a link down in the video description with a link for each particular make. So if you have a Toyota, it's there. If you have a Honda, it's there. If you have a GM, I'll have a drive cycle for you. Do the drive cycle one or two times. And just keep in mind, if you have a vehicle like a Honda, sometimes you're going to go ahead and need a stereo code. So I do want to let you guys know about that so you don't run into any problems. And... If you guys are enjoying this video, make sure you guys give the video a thumbs up. If you're not and the video is not helpful, give it a thumbs down. I understand. Just let me know why so I can make you guys a better video in the future. So you might be telling yourself that you don't have much, but you need an answer. I'm going to go ahead and help you out with this as well and show you what I would do if I didn't have much as far as tools and understanding. I'm going to show you guys how to simplify this. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to show you an easy way to go ahead and load test your battery 
in the following clip, I'm going to show you how to simulate this by using the ignition and leaving it on for 5 to 10 minutes. Depending on the size of your battery, I'm using a very small little 1.3 liter Honda to put a load on the battery for about 5 minutes. But if your vehicle's engine is 2 liters or bigger, I would go ahead and try this for 10 minutes. And you can also exert a small load on the battery by leaving the headlights on when the engine is off. So to confirm that I don't just have a ghost or a surface charge, what I'm going to do is let the vehicle lights turn on. And I'm going to leave these on for about five minutes. You can do shorter if you need to, but five minutes is a really good test. And I'm going to go ahead and monitor the battery voltage afterwards and make sure that I'm not reading some crazy surface voltage. As most vehicles, when they first turn off, sometimes they're reading 12.8, and 12.9 which is not the real voltage of the battery and a fully charged lead acid battery is going to be completely charged at about 12.6 and if it's below 12.0 it may be under 50 percent state of charge so you want to go ahead and pay attention to that and once your five minutes is up i'm going to show you guys what you need to do all right so my five minutes is up i've let the headlights run and now I'm gonna grab a digital voltmeter like this. And these are fairly inexpensive. I'll have a link to something like this in the video description box down below. I'm gonna put the positive to the positive, the negative to the negative. And we can see that we have a battery reading 12.33. And this is really important because originally, if you want to go test this battery, this might be reading 12.6, seven or eight. And that is not the true voltage as if this voltage is below 12 volts, what might end up happening is that your oxygen sensor monitor is not gonna set. So a lot of these newer vehicles are so heavily dependent on the computers. When you have a weak battery like this, you can start having transmission issues. You can have your oxygen sensor monitor not get ready. It will basically be a big nightmare. So you get yourself a load tester or go ahead and let the headlights run for about five minutes and then test it with a digital voltmeter like this and if you are holding I think above 12.2 you should be okay if you're seeing your voltage in the 11.8 11.5 range I would definitely go ahead and consider replacing the battery maybe putting it on a battery tender or battery charger if needed and a few last things if you head on over to youtube.com forward slash random fix or at the end of this video I'll leave you guys a link to this playlist this playlist includes all the videos that you're looking for that relate to your drive monitors and it covers this in depth and I show you how to go ahead and complete these drive cycles for your vehicle. So I have Subaru right here, Volkswagen, and I'll also have this video for you guys where I show you how to do this quickly in 6.4 miles and I'll have a link to this battery load tester right here. This is amazing and it will go ahead and test the battery for you as well as check your charging system and unless you want to run to the parts store every single second this OD2 reader is amazing and I highly suggest it and the nice thing with this one is it'll stop beeping once the monitors are set and that green little arrow makes it really nice and convenient to visually see if all your monitors are set here's going to be the contact cleaner for your oxygen sensor that I recommend and make sure you're always using OEM oxygen sensors. Hey everybody, thank you so much for uh, having the patience for this oxygen sensor monitor video. Was it a very boring video for daddy to make? Yes. It was super boring, but I hope it helped you guys out. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. I try to get back to all you guys and check all the links down below. Do you want to add anything? Uh, nothing. Nothing? Yeah, the only thing, it was just boring. And did you eat any sneakers? Because I love sneakers. I don't need any sneakers, but I was recommending that to the audience. Hopefully you guys did not have to eat too many sneakers or have too much coffee to stay awake during that. But these oxygen sensor monitors are very tricky. And I hope you guys got a lot of takeaways from the video and you are successful in getting your vehicle to pass an emissions test and make it a great day. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.
Snickers. 